Hello, Gaston County. Welcome to episode number 64 of Gaston's Great, a podcast highlighting some of the great things happening in and around Gaston County. I'm your host, Stephen Long, and we are coming to you once again from the international headquarters of GSM Services right here in downtown Gastonia as we continue looking forward to having great discussions in the coming weeks and months. We simply believe in discussing more of the reasons why Gaston's great. We are highlighting, and I'm going to say it for the third time, this is a special episode because this is about the, the Shield Museum and some of the great things and programs that are happening through the museum. Uh, and we have Nathan Chapman, Tiffany Stewart, and MC Cox with us today. Woo-hoo. Nice. Here in the background, and don't even, <laughs> don't even have headphones on. <laughs> So we're going to talk about some some things happening at the Shield Museum and, and outreach uh, programs for the fall. So Nathan is the farm program specialist, Tiffany is the marketing coordinator, and MC is the outreach and volunteer manager. So uh, Nathan, Tiffany, and MC, it's great to have you on, and welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you. So we're going to get right to it, and we're going to start um, with MC, just because you're the closest to me. Kind of tell us a little bit about yourself, your role with the museum, anything anything you want to share there. Um, Well, I am, like you said, the outreach and volunteer manager, so I work a lot with people out in the community, so primarily what I do is I will take uh, our programs we offer at the museum into schools, um, sometimes community centers, science nights, um, family nights, stuff like that, um, and try to share the resources we have at the museum with people who uh, either can't get to us or it's just easier, more affordable for us to go to them. Okay. Um, and I also reach out into lots of different groups of people um, to get them to give back to the museum. Um, we're pretty heavily involved with the community, and um, I found a pretty strong response with people wanting to join us and uh, kind of help us accomplish some of our goals. So I've been there about six years. Okay. Um, so I've really enjoyed my growth there. I didn't start out doing either of those jobs. I started <laughs> out part-time and kind of worked my way through some things. So it's been a really interesting adventure okay very good thank you nathan what about you i'm the farm program specialist so my main focus is teaching agriculture slash natural sciences to field trip groups or planning a like agriculture or outdoor related events so this fall we're doing the pumpkin patch at the shield museum so we do uh, field trip groups we do teaching to um several hundred students probably a week in our peak season and it's largely on agriculture where pumpkins came from and how we use them culturally today so that's the largest focus Um, and I started at the museum around one year ago so last September doing pumpkin patch that was why I was hired in the first place part-time and from there I've fortunately been able to expand into more roles so more teaching roles um, working with our after-school programs our kids quest program and teaching there so, a lot of teaching, and I do do the uh, vegetable gardens and displays on our farm at the museum. Okay, very cool. So, I didn't ask uh, MC this question, but what kind of what brought you to the museum? How did you end up there? That's a long journey. So, <laughs> pre-COVID. This is a 30-minute maximum podcast. Okay, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm trying kidding. to keep it short. I'm kidding. <laughs> so, pre-COVID, uh, I was graduated college, did some odd jobs around uh Worked as a farmhand for my great uncle, did cut grass cutting, uh, and even did my own uh, market garden, so selling produce okay. at the Shelby Farmer's Market and uh, Cherville's Farmer's Market, depending cool. on the year. Um, and from there, I saw the posting for a farm position at the museum, actually teaching and educating about agriculture. And from working at the Farmer's Market, I was really interested in uh, actually educating people more than maybe selling the stuff, so I applied. Uh, almost got in, and then the COVID curtain fell. Oh, yeah. So I had to take a, I think it was a year and a half sabbatical of continuing to do farmer's market stuff, working odd jobs there. But then I was able to get hired and fortunately get to educate. So Very good. So maybe MC, can you share how, you mind sharing how you ended up at the museum? Yeah, so I have a shorter journey, I guess. Um, so when I graduated college, I spent a year as an AmeriCorps member um, oh, wow. up in Virginia working for state parks. So through that program, I got to experience a lot of different things um, from um, wildfires that we would set for conservation purposes to okay. building trails and teaching people about um, Appalachian wildlife and stuff like that. 
um, but those terms have an expiration date. Mm-hmm. And I was looking to uh, move back to North Carolina, um, and my parents live in the area, and my mom just saw the posting. And oh, okay. um, I interviewed for the outreach position, um, didn't get it right away, um, just based on experience. I was pretty fresh out of school. Um, but luckily, um, Tony uh, decided to keep me around, and I just stuck <laughs> around until um, – I got to do the outreach position. So I've been a natural teacher my entire life. So it was really nice to be able to finally do it. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that. Tiffany, um, my understanding is you've been here longer than anybody on the in the. Absolutely, I'm an expert at all things shield. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what Actually, do you do? this is my two week anniversary as the marketing coordinator. Okay. Yeah, I'm so, just very pleased to be here. So how did you end up here at the museum? And um, if you don't mind sharing. Yeah, I think so, I saw uh, some out west. Yes, past history. Okay. So I grew up in Las Vegas, Nevada. Very different. That's not get, <laughs> Yeah, that's not Gaston County. <laughs> that's a whole other <laughs> podcast. <laughs> uh, and then uh, we spent some time in Missouri, and then three months ago we moved here to Gaston County um, for my husband's role. Okay, he, he's a financial planner. Um, so I'm a market marketing professional obviously, and uh, worked for a library in Missouri where I did a lot of social media and content writing. And um, I had seen a lot of job postings in the area for financial services and Mm. things like that, which I think I could do that, market financial services. But boy, the museum just sounded like a lot more fun. (laughs) Well, you know, we, we, I think the very first time when we had Ann Tippett on, we did briefly talk about, you know, Sheila is probably someone who grew, has grown up here. We probably, it's something that we take for granted, the people that grew up here and live here. Um, I mean, I think so, at times it may be more well-known, frankly, away from Gaston County than it is within Gaston County, especially somebody like me who literally, every time I walk out of my house growing up, there it was. I mean, I, sure. I, I, and, and went to uh, elementary school, going to programs there for forever. So it's just a really, it's just a terrific uh, a gem to have that we have here in, in Gaston County. So, um, again, I appreciate you guys just sharing a little bit of uh, background information and, and kind of what you, you do with the museum. So, let me, MC, come back to you. Kind of just share, you know, we're talking about what's going on in the museum right now, uh, uh, fall programs, or maybe that's not the right word, uh, or, or events. Um, I'm sure you'll straighten me out on how what, what you call it. But just kind of tell about what, what's going on and kind of why, why you guys are here sharing uh, today. So uh, as we gear up for the fall, this is really when our programs in general get going. Um, You know, teachers and students have settled back into the routine of being in school, um, especially this year now that everybody is back in school, uh, and they're allowing people to go on field trips, and they're allowing field trips to come to them. So um, our big deal this fall is pumpkins. Um, So all October, we're going to be offering both pumpkin patch programs at the museum, but also Um, our traveling pumpkin patch. So we will load up a bunch of pumpkins and some things to sort of set the scene and bring it to your school. So instead of having to load up your students to travel up to the mountains or wherever to go to a pumpkin patch, we can do that right there at your school. And we'll talk about the pumpkin life cycle and the evolution of pumpkins because they used to be really nasty, bitter things that (laughs) people didn't Uh eat or couldn't eat. Um, And so we'll talk about how that changed over time. Um, and how people across the world have used pumpkins. Um, and then students get to pick a pumpkin to take home. So it's really that whole pumpkin patch experience. Um, so getting ready to get that moving. So have you, um, I, I might just a quick note here, in person, right? How, I mean, is it is this the first full school year that you're able to do things from the museum with the with kids, especially in person consistently? Or has it opened up completely? For the most part? For the most part, yeah. Um, So the beginning of last school year was a little unsure. We started off a little bit slow. um, But when people really picked up on all the safety precautions that we were going through to be able to come in and make sure that we were healthy and that we were going to keep their students safe and healthy, um, we started drumming up a little bit more business. And our um, visits to the museum picked up some last year, too, uh, that we were pleasantly surprised about. So... Um, I think this year people are ready oh, yeah. to yeah. have just whatever normal is these days. They're ready to just get back to doing those fun things. Yeah, I would expect. And, I, again, I, I'm sure no expert on it, but for outreach to school specifically, I would just think in person is such makes such more of an impact than anything else 
I don't even know if y'all even do anything virtual with the school. That might be almost impossible. But um, as much as I appreciate the virtual stuff that we even we've been able to do here at our company, yeah, I'm kind of tired of that. Yeah, the kids are tired of it too. Yeah, yeah. I want some. I want some in-person interaction and mm-hmm. uh, building that. So uh, again, so thank thank you for sharing that. Uh, Nathan, what, what about you? I mean, what, what, how does that tie in with what you're doing and what is going on with the, the museum um, related to, to your, your uh, focus? So my main focus is uh, field trips and okay. uh, our events. So we have Shilloween coming up October 29th. So we'll be doing pumpkin carving there and kind of an informal pumpkin patch program. So I'll still be talking about all the things that MC discussed earlier, kind of the natural history, uh, cultural significance of pumpkins, how we use pumpkins in our everyday life, and then the, like, growth cycle, agricultural components. So that's my main focus is uh, at the museum, teaching from right. teaching from the farm, uh, kind of showing children children and guests, uh, feeding pumpkins to our animals, all kinds of different things like that. So uh, for those of listeners who I can't imagine we would have any that have never been to the museum, um, I won't bring that up. That was admitted <laughs> to us yesterday that someone in the room has not been to the museum, <laughs> uh, Naomi. Um, I think maybe this is a good time to talk about the, the what you call the farm, right? I mean, I'm, yeah. I mean, I, I'm up there. Actually, I'm up there every Saturday morning as well with a, a group called F3 um, that meets up there <laughs> in the parking lot on Saturday morning. So I see it all the time. What share with our listeners everything you've got going up there? Because some people might not even might have no idea. Um, is that correct, Grandma? I have no idea what what you've really got going on over there with the with that area. Oh yeah, so on the farm we have a lot of uh, livestock animals that we use for agricultural production. So we've got goats, sheep, chickens, rabbits, pigs, turkey. alpaca, turkey. So all of those are live animals that we have on the farm, serving a purpose for educating children, so they actually get to see where their food comes from. We also have a historical garden. It doesn't just show up at the grocery store, does it? No. no. <laughs> it's a long, tedious process. Um, and then we have a vegetable gardens, uh, kind of growing heritage-style varieties in our heritage garden. It's kind of a small fenced in area. Have some Christmas trees growing, talking about that portion of agriculture. And also we have the raised bed gardens that are kind of like just in general what can, you can do at home. So it's a lot of like uh, – hands-on, like yeah. actually getting to interact, see stuff growing, um, working with some of the field trip groups and our after-school program, actually planting stuff in the gardens, working in the gardens. So just trying to give as many well-rounded um, experiences to students that come to the museum uh, on agriculture, especially since Gaston County is kind of urbanizing more and more, and we're losing that connection to like rural agricultural areas. Do you think um – Nowadays, this is a just a random question that comes to my mind. Um, schools in general and, and kids, do they we haven't do they realize the importance of agriculture and how that was frankly the foundation of you know the everything. United States of America and everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I know that may be not a fair question. I don't want to get anybody in trouble, um, well, but I, you know, I, f- I feel like it's a just a kind of a natural shift. So. It's out of sight, out of mind, so a lot of our production maybe comes from out west, uh, California, somewhere else far away, or if you're in an urban environment, you don't see cows that are responsible for your beef or milk. Uh, You don't see chickens running around normally, so um, I think it's just kind of a gradual drift away from that. So the museum having the farm, our big focus is just trying to have some place so that people can come with their families, with their students, and actually experience agriculture kind of kind of like what was on, on an old farm, not modern farms or large 100,000-acre plots, but yeah. small, intimate family farm. Yeah, I was fortunate that um, something my kids didn't get to experience, unless they went to the museum maybe, right. um, was my mother's side of the family. We, we still had my grandmother and uncles still lived in Lucia, North Carolina, which is, you know, but I guess you would call it between Stanley and Denver, I guess. Um, and they, they still had a small farm where, I mean, I got to interact with – yeah, the animals, and it was just a unique experience that, you know, at the time, it was just what we did. But now looking back, I'm like, gosh, yeah, my kids never got to go out and be chased, terrified by the, the, the rooster and the pig, you know. I mean, yeah. it, you know, Every I mean, kid needs that I was experience. terrified. <laughs> I mean, I was terrified of those animals when I was super small, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So um, we just don't get that experience. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, if, if I can just add, uh, being the only one who was present at the museum before, 
before COVID and also oh, yeah. after, okay. um, as you probably know, there was a really big shift in what the farm looks like. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's purpose as far as education. Um, and I think part of that was bringing, uh, the messaging there up to date with what, um, is important that kids understand and know about now. Um, we get a lot of groups that come from out of County. We get a lot of Mecklenburg County groups and, um, those kids legitimately think that their apples come from the grocery store. <laughs> um, and well, that's Mecklenburg County. Uh, well, <laughs> once you go across that river, I mean, that is the gateway. To, yeah, that is the Charlotte is the gateway to Gastonia. It truly remind is. everybody. Um, but what Nathan's doing out there on the farm <laughs> with w- teaching students and some adults, really, um, you know, that their food is all connected back to the earth is like is oh, just sure. so important. Um, you know, even if they have a chicken sandwich, like every single component of that is connected to somebody having to produce it. Um, and there's there's not a Chick-fil-A factory producing, you know, that great chicken sandwich, right? Correct. It's, it nope. Yeah. So I think <laughs> just <yet>. bringing <laughs> back that importance yeah, let's of hope agriculture. Not, personally. Yeah. 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 Well, that's a great point. Um, I, I appreciate you sharing that. And I'm sorry for that just out of the blue question there. But that, that's something I'm, I'm standing here, reali- as a parent of three kids, I'm standing there realizing, boy, do my kids have any concept of that i think Time they do for a visit to the farm maybe oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe but they, you know now they did they have spent a lot of time there growing up being in gaston county schools and and uh, uh I, i'm not gonna take any credit but my wife for sure uh, took them and spent a lot of time at the museum with them uh, especially when they were new exhibits and you know traveling exhibits that came through um so you know Maybe this is a question I'm going to ask, especially maybe for you, MC, since you've been at the museum longer. Um, looking back with the, whether it's outreach or just in general, I mean, can looking what is there something you're really most proud of? Whether it was an event or maybe just the stuff going on now, something you can kind of share with our our our, um, our listeners. Um, so I kind of have, I guess, two answers to okay. this. Um, personally, for me, my biggest accomplishments are those aha moments that I get with guests okay. of just. Um, it's a really fun ta- fun place to teach um, because we kind of just get to teach about whatever we're interested in and whatever we're passionate about. And so when I can share that with somebody and their eyes light up um, right. and they're like, oh my gosh, I get that now. I get it and I'm going to go do that. Um, it just is really satisfying um, and it really fuels the desire to continue to light those sparks in people. Um, but overall, just... Uh, believing in the message of the museum to get people in and interested and connect natural history and the history of Gaston County to their lives in a way that they implement it as they go forward has been a really rewarding thing to see. Um, And we even saw that through COVID when our doors were closed and we had people sending us emails and social media messages like, when can we come back? (laughs) When are you guys going to let us come back in? You know, what can we do? Um, you know, we had our farm and the uh, nature trail open and people were just chomping at the bit to get more. And it's just really special to work someplace uh, that the community wants more of. So it's been really, really rewarding to see that. Very good. So how would you answer that? And maybe, you know, I kind of left part of that question out and say, I'm sorry, it's kind of specific successes. I think you shared that, but, you know, maybe successes from what you're most proud of, um, what what is going to wow you know a, a resident or or guest that comes out to to the farm or whatever you're involved with? That's a scary question to ask me because I'm outside working with animal poop and dirt <laughs> and soil, <laughs> cold, hot reality. Hot. I mean, you're oh, yeah. you're dealing with reality. Yeah. yeah. So personally, I think it was Friday. We had a group of uh, I think fourth or fifth graders, and I got them to smell cow poop because I was teaching about growing pumpkins and how. Way, way back, there was large animals in North America that would eat pumpkins yeah. and walk around, use the bathroom, plant the seeds, and the seeds would sprout. So I had a little tray with cow patties in it uh, <laughs> with pumpkin seeds planted in it. So I would take it out and show people, and then one student was like, can we smell it? Can we touch it? And I was like, yes. Thank you for asking such a <laughs> Such an obvious question yeah. from a child, right? Yeah. 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 So I was like, walk an around. An adult would not ask that question. No. So letting them actually touch the pumpkin seeds see how it was actually sprouting, uh, and it was just like, oh, this is, a lot of them were like, is that soil, is that soil? And I was like, no, this is fresh manure, but with the pumpkins, with all the life in the soil, it'll turn back into soil and grow food for us. So that was a little moment, and I've had several <laughs> others random out of the out of nowhere things like that. But that's the biggest thing is like 
and letting the children kind of guide themselves, encouraging them to ask questions to, you know. It's think, okay to ask questions, right? Well, the question, like, especially some of the questions that we quit asking when we get older. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the biggest <laughs> thing is uh, fortunately getting to work with students as they kind of help keep me young, keep me humble, and keep me asking questions so that I can be a lifelong learner. Yeah, it's nothing better than talking about poop to keep a, four, a fourth grader interested, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> or a middle schooler or whatever oh, yeah. the case may be. That's, that's good. Um, Tiffany, I mean, what has your two-week impression been, you know, for specifically what we're talking about here, but just the kind of the museum in general and, and our community in general? What, what would you, how would you answer that question? Well, I'm so glad you asked. It's funny because when I told people I was planning to come and work at the Shield Museum, they would say, oh, I went there when I was a kid. Yeah. And gosh, I need to get back there. And I would say, "Do you know we have goats?" Yeah. And they would say, "I really need to get back there." Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't meet one person that didn't have positive things to say about the Shiel. It's such a, I guess, a special place in the community. Right. Everybody has a memory um, of going or, or having their kids enjoy something there. I think it really speaks to our ed- educators and our exhibits and just what we offer that kind of appeal to all ages that um, make it such a great spot to visit for not just people in Gaston County, but all over the country and the world. Um, as far as my first impressions, it's just an exciting place to be. Yeah. Uh, the people are great. Um, I feel like I could walk through every day for a year and still not learn all no, of the things there are to learn. And, and as an fair, adult, yeah. I think we forget sometimes that we're lifelong learners too and it's not just about exposing our kids to things, which is important. Sure. But also, we're never too old to learn something new ourselves. Well, very good. So, again, I'm, I'm always interested in, you know, a fresh perspective um, of our community in, in, a, in a wonderful, such a great place like, like the Shield. Mm-hmm. Um, let me say, coming back to you, again, I'm not sure how to word this question exactly, but looking ahead for – you know, the um, outreach and, and volunteer programs uh, that you might be involved with. Anything coming up in the future? Or what? Or if you had a magic wand and you could say, this is what I want what, what I want this to look like in five years or down the road. I mean, was that a fair, fair question? Or is it secret and you'd have to kill us if you told us? <laughs> no, not at all. Um, I actually have a p- piece of paper in my office of, like, dream wish list okay. that I write things down just to, you know, kind of keep – aspirations fresh right. um, so you don't get bogged down with the everyday. Um, I'd really love to see outreach grow into a multi-person kind of sub-department of education because there are times when we can't get to everybody right. that we want to or that's asking us to come out, um, and that really hurts, you know, that's to not be able to go and serve that part of the community or um, not to be able to have someone who can go and travel across North Carolina to go to this event because we're doing something else. Um, so I'd like to see it grow a little bit more. Um, back way before, you know, the COVID times, we were servicing over 10,000 students a year. Um, wow, that's a big number. Yeah, and that's what one person can accomplish. Um, so I would love to see how many students um, and adults and lifelong learners we can reach if we have multiple people doing it. Um, getting more volunteers involved because okay. they're great sources of you know life experiences. We've got some awesome volunteers that are retired adults that have chosen just to come and share their life experiences with other people, and I'd like to see that grow as well. Very good, Nathan. What about you in the farm a- agricultural you know section of the museum? And what what would you if you could wave that magic wand or looking ahead five to ten years? Um, have I heard of buffalo out there or something? Um, we've actually had buffalo before in the museum pre my time pre MC's time they actually had a great plains exhibit I believe I believe so yeah and they actually had living baby bison (laughs) in the museum Um, and they'd have to take them to the farm at night and then bring them back in the museum during the day so yeah we've done it before but uh, that's difficult Um, for me it'd be a lot more involvement so trying to structure programs where all field trip groups or any activities that we do they can actually have like a meaningful impact on the farm like actually come out and plant something okay so that those students actually say i planted carrots today or i planted onions today or something really tactile hands-on they actually did 
a physical experiment that actually improved the farm. So um, definitely more hands-on activities, maybe less formal lecture, more interactive stuff. That's really what I'd like to see more of. More playing with poop. Oh, yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but generally that type of stuff, and as far as like, I don't know, like structures or displays or things like that, I feel like we're at a pretty good place, but it's yeah. kind of, there's always room to grow, develop, and that type of stuff. So I've only been there a year or so. Yeah, I mean, also I think there's, I would expect, again, with the – Farm is specifically there are some just physical limitations, right, right? With the with the amount of space you had, even though I've heard some chatter about some potential expansion uh, with some space there. But I'll I don't, that is a that's a top secret um, thing we can't talk about, Naomi. So we might have to cut we might have to cut that part out. <laughs> so um, remember this, remember this is a this is a, a podcast really about Gaston County as a whole, hopefully, and thing, good things that are happening around here. So, um, MC, I mean, why, why would you say Gaston County is better in general because of the, you know, the work you were doing specifically with um, the museum? Um, I think just sharing kind of the hidden gem that is Gaston County. There's so much um, culture and so much history here that a lot of people don't know about, right. um, especially with, you know, the history of the Catawba tribe, and um, everything that has happened since then and until now, <laughs> sharing that with people who don't live in Gaston County and also people who live here who've, you know, kind of been steered away from learning about any of that stuff. Um, it's definitely an underrated area. You know, I've got friends sure. that live across the river uh, in Mecklenburg County, and they're like, man, you're just all the way out there. But all the I, way out there. I'm, you know, we're 20 minutes away <laughs> from yeah. the city, minutes, right? Yeah. And um, I'm just never bored here. You know, there's always something to do. Um, you know, I have a little bit of a skewed perspective because I work someplace oh, that sure. is the thing to do. Um, but I've just really enjoyed getting to know the community. Um, even living over in the Belmont area, not even in Gastonia, mm. there's so much stuff sure. to do. Um, it's nice to hear that you. we do have these Mecklenburg County students coming over here so they can be indoctrinated into the Gaston County way. That's right. Um, and speaking of the Catawba tribe, I'm kind of an odd story. I was um, I was a white guy when I was growing up. I think we were the Sioux tribe. And then when I had my son and I were involved in the white guys here, we were the Catawba tribe. And it was fantastic. Mm-hmm. I mean, just, and we, so part of what you do, you, know, you study that and study the history of that and, and why that's such an important piece for our community here locally. Nathan, what, how would you answer that question? You know, why is Gaston County better? Well, that's a difficult question. You've already like answered it. And y'all, oh you yeah. both have already kind of <laughs> answered that a little yeah. bit yeah. before. I, I feel like it is a good interface between urban and rural, so it's kind of yeah. in between. So uh, fortunately, we're kind of able to teach and educate people from all walks, all walks of life, all education areas, all ages, um, and all different experiences. So... Um, also the ability just to have people come out and actually have access to, you know, natural, uh, to like state parks, Crowder's Mountain, oh, yeah. um, mm-hmm. and explore the natural areas that we have in Gaston County is the largest thing is just having areas where people can get outdoors, experience nature, and kind of learn on their own because just being present outside or walking down the street, just experience that everything is the biggest education thing for me I can think of. All right, very good. Yeah. Tiffany, I'm not going to let you off the hook on that question, even though you've only, this is two weeks with the museum, but in general, I mean, what, what would, how would you answer that, why Gaston County is better for what you, you guys are doing, just maybe even as a whole at, at the museum? Hmm. Well, I am new to the area, yeah. but there's a lot of great food in Gaston County, which I appreciate as a That's true. museum worker and visitor. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, and That's I do true. love the fact that the community is very supportive of what we do. Yeah. And so um, whether we're welcoming people from outside the county or just um, kind of building up the community that lives nearby, um, especially things like our Kids Quest program, these are things that really serve people. They're not necessarily um, the easiest things for us to do, but we see a need and we want to fill that need because this is our community. Right. And so, um, yeah, we're here for the people and, um, 
Okay. It's a it's a cool place to live and work. Yeah, very Massey good. County, woohoo! <laughs> so, um, so before we move on here, is there anything I haven't asked? Anything specific you guys want to share? I mean, before we finish, we'll make sure our listeners know specifics. How long the the, the pumpkin patch stuff is going on? How you know just how how they can get involved? Whatever we we want to make sure we, we that's kind of the most important thing, right? The whole the whole point is to bring awareness to what you guys are doing. I mean, that's the, the point of. Uh, of, of all of our uh, episodes here. But is there anything you'd like to share before we move on to these high-level questions that we're going to get to here in a second that, or anything I haven't asked? I could just I could mention the Rex's pumpkin patch that we have going on indoors, and that's something that the public can stop by any day of the week that we're open, and uh, instead of going to Walmart or somewhere, you can purchase your pumpkin from the Shield Museum. Oh, okay, um, I think you I can knew also that. check out our giant T Rex while you're there at it. Um, you just purchase those at the front desk. Okay, that's right inside the main entrance right from the parking the main lot, right? Entrance. Yep. Yeah. So if you're shopping for your jack o' lanterns or your fall decorations, think of the Shield. Oh, no, that's good. I didn't. Yeah. I wasn't aware of that. That's interesting. Okay. Yep. That's a blessing yeah. because we were losing. 10 pumpkins a day to squirrels outside. <laughs> so now we only lose maybe 10 a week just to natural stuff. So yeah. squirrels, they love struggle. the pumpkins, huh? Oh, yeah. I just want to invite people who haven't been in a while to come back. Or ever. Or ever, yeah, if you've never been. I mean, it's, it's not a museum that's intimidating to go to. You know, you go to some of these larger, more prestigious museums and – you're like, whoa, I don't, I don't know where to go from here. But oh, it's, sure. it's very, um, we're a very welcoming place, I guess. Um, yeah, I would you know, agree with it's, that. It's bite-sized, I guess. You know, you can mm-hmm. digest it pretty easily, and there is something for all interests and all ages. So if you haven't been in a long time or if you've never been, it's a good time to come out. Okay, very good. Well, like I said, we'll, we'll finish, before we finish, we'll make sure our, our listeners know how to, to get in and touch with the museum any volunteer um, opportunities just anything you know to, to close it out but we're going to run through this um, Gaston County what we call our speed round of questions that this is really what your family and you know co-workers and just people in general that you're that you know are really this is really what they're interested in okay right so um, MC we'll start with you favorite Tony's ice cream flavor banana pudding banana pudding okay. we've heard that a couple times I don't eat dairy, but my favorite flavor, period, is mint chocolate chip. Mint chocolate chip. Yep. Um, mm. Can we do like a wah, wah, wah or something? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Tiffany, you haven't been here very long, but I'm assuming but you've I been to Tony's. Tony's already. Okay. Like I said, good food. Right. Very good. So, um, I've had a black cherry milkshake that was delicious. Black cherry is a common answer. Um. Well, Tiffany, have you had Sundrop or Cheerwine since you've I've been? I've had both. And equally you're delicious. Equally delicious. Na- Nathan, Sundrop or Cheerwine? Pepsi. Can we do that again? For <laughs> and see. I'm a Sundrop girl. Okay, very good. We'll see if we can't, we won't, we won't do that again on this question. I'm hoping, Nathan. Uh, MC, <laughs> favorite local restaurant? Um, Sammy's in Belmont. Oh, My husband and I are there at least once a week. Oh, Sammy's is good. Really like Lucky Samurai. Oh, okay. We'll we won't we won't <laughs> do the want why on this one. That's pretty good. I, I Tiffany? Uh we're already regulars at Gia's. Oh yeah, Gia's good. Yeah. No hip road. Um you can't say the farm at the museum or the nature trail. So favorite Tiffany sta- favorite outdoor activity in Gaston County or favorite park or Probably Stowe Park. Yeah. 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 Right in downtown Belmont. Yeah. Nice. Those parks cool. Yeah. Nathan? Crowder's Mountain. Oh yeah. Crowder's Mountain is a, it's a, another awesome unique, place. you know, I mean, where, where, why, why do we have a mountain in Gaston County, right? It's, it, if you look around elsewhere, there's just nothing else like that around here. MC? Um, I'm just a big fan of all the greenways. Yeah. Um, we live in the Catawba Heights area, and so okay. we take our dogs out and just walk around. It's really nice to have that. Yeah, and, and the way that's been expanded, frankly, the last few years, um, we had, oh, the, uh, the group in Charlotte, uh, Carolina Thread Trail we, was one of one of our episodes, and man, I had no idea how connected that entire trail system uh, is until we we had them on. All right, this is the question um, that's really the most important one. MC, I'll start with you, and get get ready on the uh, <laughs> UNC Duke or NC State. None of the above. 
Okay. Oh, okay. I went to Virginia Tech. I'm a hokey at heart. I can't root for anybody else. There could be worse answers. In fact, I just was in Sunday. I was at in Winston Salem watching the daughter of a high school friend of mine play soccer for Virginia Tech against against uh, Wake Forest, and um, Virginia Tech handled them hand easily handle handled. Uh, the Demon Deacon. So pretty rad soccer program. And Virginia Tech is actually, if you put schools together, NC State and Virginia Tech are very, very similar, very similar schools. I went to NC State too, so for a master's. So, but that wasn't your first answer. No. <sighs> Nathan, <laughs> NC State, go Wolfpack! Come on, give us a cheer! Give us yes. yes. What I'm talking about. You have redeemed yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I know that UNLV was not one of the choices, but... And that is my alma mater. Okay. So I can never say Duke, but the other two I'm probably fine with. All right. Yeah, don't... Back in basketball days. Don't say know, Duke, yeah. Maybe. And I love Duke, so... Yeah. Mm. We, won't even, we won't even go there. <laughs> so Tiffany's staying with you. What is something very few people know about you? Oh. I once won a cruise on the Ellen Show. What? Yes. Really? It wow. was fabulous. That is definitely a first for the Gaston's Great Ooh. Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Top that, Nathan. <laughs> I can't top that. I, I normally wear everything on my sleeve pretty much, so I don't – most everybody knows if you're around me. A positive blood type maybe? Huh. Okay. That's that's random that's, fact. That's another first. That's a fun on, fact. Uh, on bringing, out, bringing out the blood types. <laughs> All right, MC. Um, I was Miss Congeniality at my high school, um, which most people would contest now. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And where was that, if you don't mind uh, me asking? I grew up in Mooresville, so up okay. by the Lake Norman area. Okay, very good. That was three firsts for all <laughs> of three of those answers the on, on the podcast. <laughs> um, MC, maybe stick with you. Is there, is there a book or a blog or article or podcast you follow, something that you might recommend to our, our listeners? Um, well, I do listen to a lot of podcasts, um, but I won't give my, I'm a true crime fanatic. So, oh, okay. Um, but yeah. so That's is some interesting stuff. Yeah. So is everybody else. Um, but I actually just finished a really good novel called Americana. Um, it's by a Nar- Nigerian author. Um, I will not even begin to try to pronounce her name because okay. I will butcher it to the point of embarrassment. Um, but it's really good. It um, looks at uh, 1990s, early 2000s life through the lens of Nigerian college students. Okay. Um, and kind of where they went in the world and kind of their homecoming. So it was a very interesting read. I'm sure it is. Nathan, what about you? Anything you could, ha- any way you could answer that question? Oh, yeah. Uh, Three Body Problem by Seen Lee. Um, the main focus is it's uh, existential horror, talking about humanity's future, all of the dark aspects of human society and how they've kind of erupted and maybe have some disastrous <laughs> impacts for the future. I like uh, existential horror, that type of stuff. So okay. Lovecraft, all that. So stuff. if we don't get our agriculture, make sure agriculture is on top of the list, we, we might have a horror problem oh, in yeah. the future. I mean, it, it was discussed in the book. So Okay, that's interesting. interesting. perspective. Very good. Tiffany, how about you? Coming from the library world, I could give you a hundred books. I'm sure, books. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> but... Uh, one I just recently finished that I really enjoyed was Oh William by Elizabeth Strout and uh, she's just really good at bringing people to life by the time you finish a book you just feel like you really know her characters and you fall in love with them a little bit okay I appreciate you again sharing that I just like to I'm a big reader and I'm a podcast listener almost exclusively when I'm in my vehicle especially or jogging or or hiking or anything so um, I appreciate you, you sharing I'm always looking for you know, something good to read and maybe something that might impact our, our listeners. So um, I appreciate you kind of indulging us on those Gaston County questions. And we're, we're going to finish up here. Just got a few more questions. Um, uh, Tiffany, I know you haven't been here very long, but I'm going to ask this question anyway. You know, besides the Shield Museum and kind of what you're involved with currently, why? what is your kind of perspective on why Gaston County is such a great place? Honestly, the people. Right. I mean, I, I, everybody is so kind and friendly, f- whether you're walking in the grocery store and they're holding the door open and smiling <laughs> for you, or you're uh, at work interacting with people. I, I have yet, uh, knock on wood, I have yeah. yet to meet somebody cranky. So 
I'm just so impressed with the people of Gaston. Well, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's a, uh, ultimately, it's all about relationships, everything that we're in involved with. So, uh, Nathan, how would you answer that? I mean, that was the exact same thing that I was going to say. All the interactions I have on the farm with all the guests that come through, um, just getting to talk with the students, right. with the teachers, everybody from Gaston County has been awesome, and I'm pleased that I get to educate in Gaston County. Other counties, eh, maybe not so much, but well, definitely Gaston County. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> MC, how would you answer that one? Um, I have been in and out of Gaston County for the last six years, you know, and um, finally decided to plant roots and um, bought a house in Belmont about two years ago, and it's just been really nice to finally find a place that feels like a home. Okay. Um, I moved once a year from freshman year of college until – 2020. Oh, wow. Um, so for about okay. 11 years, I moved once a year um, and finally was able to find a place that felt like a hometown. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would agree. I mean, we, we've got close enough to Charlotte. If we have to go over there, I don't really like to personally, <laughs> but n enough amenities to kind of feel like we've got some amenities of the big city, but it does still feel have that, what I would call that small town. And mm -hmm. for me, that, that Mayberry feel, which is I take as a positive. Some people might not take that as a positive. Do you know what I'm talking about, Naomi, when I say Mayberry? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do y'all know what I'm talking about when I say Mayberry? Yes. Everyone? Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so um, I say this every episode, but this is actually my favorite question that, uh, that we ask. And um, MC, I'll start with you on this one. Knowing what you know now, what, what advice would you give your 20-year-old self? Um, so I took some time to think about this. Um, <laughs> I would say do the things that scare you. Ooh, that's good. Um, I just had this, like, crippling fear of missing out on things that were, like, in the place that I know. Um, so missing out on things in my hometown growing up or missing out on things uh, in Blacksburg, you know, going to college. So I never studied abroad. I never went on, <laughs> uh, you know, that trip that my friends went on because I didn't want to miss out on the stuff that was known. Yeah. Um, and now I'm almost 30 years old and kind of like, all right, well, I should have done some of those things <laughs> because, time, you know, I've got commitments and time's kind of ticking now. So the things that are intimidating and scary are, I think, the things that we learn and grow from the most. So definitely do the scary stuff. Well, that's a great answer. I'm not sure we've had that specific type of answer on the other 63 episodes. Gee, Nathan, you got to follow. Uh, you're, you're following some tough answers here. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean – that was very similar to what I was thinking. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'd offer much advice because I feel like it's best to kind of grow through the problems and the challenges and the things that you have to face in life. So really, I wouldn't offer much advice. I'd be like, you'll be <laughs> all right. You'll figure it out. Well, was this was this last year for you, 20-year-old uh, 20, 20 no, self? <laughs> yep, six years ago. Okay. Yep, so, but really uh, – Really, just it's gonna be all right. Yeah, you'll figure it. There's a way. There's and um, you don't really have to. Not maybe not put so much emphasis and uh, hard pressure on yourself to achieve stuff. Yeah, uh, things will work out. Things will fall into place. You just have to be patient and there's accept what comes. Things at twenty that seem like a big deal sometimes really aren't. No, <laughs> a lot of things yeah. that people make out to be big deals aren't. Tiffany, how would you answer that one? I'm a few further steps away from 20 than these guys, but <laughs> <laughs> I think I would say to hold things loosely. Like sometimes we are so worried about our stuff, and I think this also comes from just doing a big move that, you know, sometimes when we're holding things too tightly, yeah. we aren't open to these new opportunities and possibilities. Um, and so, yeah, that's what I would say. Okay. That's interesting. And those are three good answers. Um, I appreciate you sharing that. So uh, this has really been good, and, and I appreciate you sharing. So this is kind of just a question for all of you. Where can our listeners go to learn more about the museum, find out what's going on, when uh, new exhibits, the time frame on what you're currently doing, just kind of for, for all of you, what, what can we share with our listeners so they, they know, come, know where to find you? Um, so shieldmuseum.org, our website, obviously okay. has all kinds of information. Um, our social media, we're on Facebook, Instagram, 
think we're on YouTube. And Twitter. And Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, just follow us. I mean, we post stuff all the time. Right. Um, and if it's not on there um, and you're at the museum, flag somebody down that has a name tag on. We love to stop and talk to guests. It's genuinely one of the best parts of the day. So, Cool. Are you kind of back to, um, you said you used to have deal with 10,000 students a year. Did I, did I hear that right? I mean, where is that? Where do you think that's going to be the next 12 months? Um, I'm really hoping it's somewhere close. Um, okay. I will be really satisfied if I can get to like six to 7,000 students this year. Okay, very good. Anything else, guys, before we close this uh, episode out? Any, any last words of wisdom or anything you want to share about the museum or gas and can or anything? Thank you for having us. Well, this you're, has you're, been fantastic. You're very welcome. Listen, the museum is a, is a, just a terrific, you know, uh, thing we have here in Gaston County. As I said, being a Gaston County resident and growing up here is one of those things I probably take for granted. Um, but again, I appreciate the work you're doing. I know it's making an impact, especially on the youth here uh, in, in, in the county. So um, I'm very grateful for that. So I'm going to finish up with my either I do something at the end of each podcast with either a book recommendation or a podcast or something. And the one I'm sharing um, this week is a podcast that I'll consistently listen to called Lead to Win by a gentleman by named Michael Hyatt. It's just a good one. It's, and they're typically 20, 30-minute uh, long episodes. And I think this, the subtitle is you know, helping you win in business and life. So it's not just business um, stuff that he, that he talks about, but it's a good one that I try to consistently uh, listen to. And my quote or thought for this week comes from the – the, the, it's on attitude, and it comes from the Greek philosopher um, Epictetus. I think I'm uh, pronouncing that correctly. Um, and he said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. And kind of to our question about the 20-year-old self, um, if I had had any grasp on that when I was 20, um, I think I would have been a little better off as, as if I, I, I could have reacted a little better to to some of the things that I was um, I was faced with, so that's kind of you know our recommendation, and you also heard some good um, book recommendations from our from our guest today, and so maybe uh, check those out if you you can, and of course check out the, the museum, and I'm sure uh, Naomi's going to be there next next week, correct, Naomi? Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> to our listeners out there, uh, thanks so much for taking the time to listen to today's episode. Please continue to spread the word if you can about the podcast. And don't hesitate to contact us here at podcast at gastonsgreat.com. We're always looking for suggestions for future podcast topics and guests. You can find the podcast and subscribe at the website, gastonsgreat.com, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. And please follow us on all our social media platforms. And apparently giving us a good rating, that means a five-star rating helps us get noticed. Uh, Thanks again to Nathan, Tiffany, and MC for being our guests today. Gaston's great, at least this episode, is produced and brought to you by Naomi Hunt from GSM Services. Yay, Naomi. And edited here locally by the Sumner Group, I'm your host, Stephen Long. Thanks again for hanging out with us, and please keep coming back to hear more reasons why Gaston's great.